We're delighted to invite Allison Finkel to deliver the Devar Torah, to give us an update on the Afghan family that so many of you here in the sanctuary and those who are at home or in other places, not here but remotely, are working with this wonderful family. And uh, we're delighted that Allison is here to um, share some words of Torah with us tonight. Good evening. About a year ago, I stood here and shared a Devar Torah about our first experiences working with JCFS and Hyas to support a refugee family that had recently arrived to Skokie, fleeing the Taliban from Afghanistan. Our family of six, which later grew to seven, with the arrival of one of dad's younger brothers, has been supported mightily by Beth Emmett. From the dozens of families who helped to furnish and prepare their apartment, to those who established a long-term fund for support, to this core team that's working directly with the family, I believe that without Beth Emmett's significant and steadfast support, this family may not have been successful in their transition here. For 14 months, we have served as cultural guides. In moments of isolation and confusion, we have offered them a lifeline. We have accompanied them to school conferences, to medical appointments, to the DMV. We have spent dozens of hours sitting on their living room floor, sharing meals and drinking chai, which is their word for tea. We have celebrated the victories of everyday life, first paychecks, loose teeth, baking bread, riding bikes, sewing dresses. We took the kids trick-or-treating and we have created joyful birthday celebrations. We have been a source of friendship, and to be honest, we have been a source of frustration. A year ago, I spoke about the mountain that this family would need to climb to be successful, and it's heartening to realize how far they have come. Dad and his brother have been steadily employed for a number of months at the Eli's Cheesecake Company, the younger brother obtained his driver's license, and last summer I helped him to purchase a car. The three oldest kids are in school, and they are thriving. They've made neighborhood friends, and they have refurnished that apartment that we provided in a style that suits them. But at the same time, there are huge challenges that remain in their path to success, and none of these I could have anticipated when we first met this family last year. The first one I'll mention are the baffling gaps in our country's social safety net. A glaring one is that while our family has received fairly good medical care since their arrival, dental care of any kind is almost impossible to access. And as you might expect, dental issues are among those that, uh, which our family is experiencing and that at this point are most pressing. So here's an example. The children's dental clinic has a several month wait and a maximum appointment time of 30 minutes in which time they can do a single procedure. Their oldest child has six cavities, so it will take six appointments over 18 months to resolve the issue that one of their children is currently experiencing. A different challenge, as I've learned, is that literacy is about so much more than language. We learned that mom and dad were not literate in their native language Pashto so shortly after they arrived to Skokie. And this, of course, means that most translation tools like Google Translate that uses a text to translate platform will not be helpful to this family. So it has already difficult for us to communicate with them and for them to communicate with their outside world here. But what has compounded this, we've realized, is that here in the US, we rely on literacy as the under, underlying support system for so many things. For example, our family cannot read a bus schedule. They cannot use a calendar. They can tell time by full hours, but little in between. So teaching them, for example, that their kids don't have school on Saturdays that the bus comes at 7.20 in the morning, or that their kid's next vaccine appointment will be in April was really hard. 
Teaching them how to pay bills routinely was even harder. And then explaining concepts like a security deposit for your landlord, payroll taxes taken out of your paycheck, or how you can pay your car insurance routinely proves to be almost impossible. And sometimes this literacy gap that I'm describing combines with this safety net gap that I'm describing, and the task for us volunteers has felt Sisyphean. So our family's dental issues, for example, are exacerbated by a lack of healthcare literacy, which creates poor habits. And so despite this myriad of dental issues, when we come over to the house, we notice things like the kids drinking monster energy drinks because they don't understand the impact of that sugar or that caffeine on the kids. And perhaps for me, one of the biggest cultural frustrations are around gender norms. For example, despite now being very settled and having few barriers, mom has experienced few new freedoms. Perhaps most disappointingly, she was not permitted to join a women's English language learning group because having her leave the house to attend the class would be counter to their cultural norms about women's roles. So our little volunteer team has had to face each of these challenges with determination, with grit, and with a whole lot of humor. We've built networks of friendship along the way, and we've called each other to howl with laughter and to vent in frustration. And while we think of this family as ours, we know that their decisions and their lives are their own. And maybe for me, this has been one of the hardest lessons, that their decisions about their lives must be their own. Through this family, I feel a huge and intimate connection to Afghanistan, and I find that I'm drawn to news headlines to that corner of the world. I thought certainly of their daughter when the Taliban announced recently that girls of any age are no longer allowed to attend any sort of school. And I thought of the family's extended family when I read that more than half of the population in Afghanistan is experiencing both hunger and disease. I know that this family still has many, many barriers ahead, and I'm hopeful that they will continue to deepen their supports and find their way here. I know that while we can continue to be in their corner, they need to grow more independent of our volunteer team's help. And I know that soon it's their kids who will become their cultural guides in ways that we as their volunteers never could. But I'm hopeful that we, our scrappy volunteer team, and with the help of this broader community that is Beth Emmett, will rally again and support a different refugee family in need of support. Much of my own connection to my Jewish faith comes through tikkun olam, that idea of being a force for change in the world, and I've learned that there are others, particularly here at Beth Emmett, who feel the same. There are some days where I have felt that supporting this family has been the most difficult, challenging thing that I have ever done. But there have been many, many more where I realize that it has also been the most rewarding. So thank you again to this awesome volunteer team, most of whom are here tonight and a few who are on Zoom, who are now such wonderful, wonderful friends for working together with so much empathy and so much compassion. It's a joy to support this family with each of you. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Allison, for your beautiful, heartfelt words for your honesty, for your humor, and for all the work that so many of you in the sanctuary are doing. If, if, for a moment, if anybody who is working with the Afghan family, if you can rise so we might acknowledge you, that would be wonderful to see, because I know that it's taken a whole village of people to do this work here. Thank you for your service. Psalm 145 teaches us, that we say to God, open up your hand and give to all who are in need. And our tradition teaches us that we are God's hands and hearts on this earth. And so that when we open our hands, that we are being that conduit to 
give to those who are in need. And that, as we've heard from Allison, the giving is much more than, uh, than food or material items. It's much more about trying to navigate our society, trying to live here uh, in a way that um, helps them understand how to, how to be here. And we just appreciate all the love and the care and the support and the good humor with which you were doing it. When Allison has told me some of these stories, uh, and she had said to me this idea of, you have to think of literacy as much more than whether or not you read and write, but being able to understand how a society works and all the machinations that we just begin to take for granted because we grow up with them. So thank you for all of your lovely work. Uh, Jeff Mono, who's one of our volunteers, is going to end um, with a prayer. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for giving me this honor to um, share a prayer from an, an unknown author. Um, like I said, I feel honored since I'm a very minor player in this um, volunteer uh, project. Good and gracious God, we pray for all people who are migrating, particularly those who are forced from their homes or separated from their families because of threats of violence and persecution. We ask that you protect and keep them safe. Although we come from different countries and have our origins in different cultures, we were created by you and are made in your image. And therefore, we all share an inalienable dignity that is deserving of respect. We ask you, God, that you give us the strength to defend those who are marginalized, to give aid to those in need, to come to the defense of those who are poor or vulnerable, and to welcome those who are on the move into our homes and into our hearts. Amen. Sure.